there are three things that inspire my creative work. Toys, toys, and toys. In the late 1800s, more typically in 1895, H.G. Wells wrote a novel about a traveler in time, which in the 1960s was turned into a movie. At the end of a movie, the character, George, decides to leave his aristocratic life to live in the future in his time machine. Uh, located on the side of his garage next to his library. When his housemate went to look for George, he didn't find him, nor the time machine, but she did find that three books were missing from the library. And she asked, I'm wondering which books are missing. George's best friend came along and looked at said, the real question to ask is, which books would you take to the future? Well, if the question was asked to me, I will take that little box right here. And in this box, well, I don't have books. I have toys. I will take toys because other than books and knowledge, I think toys are paramount in our work and our aim to be creative. And I'd like to share with you at least some of the toys that I will take with me in this journey. A little wooden box. Little wooden block created by Friedrich Froebel. Friedrich Froebel, I don't know if it means anything to you, but he is the creator of kindergarten. So in my view, perhaps the single most important person influencing everybody in this room. He created a set of blocks that would use by kids in order to learn about nature, in order to learn about their world, in order to explore different possibilities. These blocks I have used and I have learned about symmetry. I have learned about geometry. I learned about combining them and created different designs. And I learned about one of the cornerstones aspects of my research, which is called shape grammars. The second toy that I would bring. It's actually related or associated with two names and two numbers. Gottfried Kirk Christiansen and the number 915,103,765. The second number is Solen Eilers. Solen Eilers, a mathematician from the Copenhagen University. And Gottfried Kirk Christiansen, the son of the inventor of Lego. What brings these two people together is a little math problem that started when Gottfried Kirk Christensen went to the patent office to file for a patent about the Lego system. And the patent officer asked him, in how many ways can you combine six of these blocks? The block that he was referring was a typical Lego of two by four. Gottfried said, well, I'm not too sure, but we're working on it. Shortly thereafter, he came up with an answer which was close to 102 million possibilities. 102 million possibilities. Solin Eilers, a mathematician from the University of Copenhagen, came a few years later and looked at the problem, and he said, how did they come up with a solution like this? He looked at it from the mathematical point of view, and he found that the actual answer due to a little change in the problem came out to be almost 915 million, or a little more than 915 million possible designs. And these are unique combinations. This, to me, proves an incredible power of simple things when they're combined in the right way. What's interesting about this number is that if one person decided to try to do all of them at once, he would have to do a 1,000 different combinations every single day for the next 2,506 years in order to complete them all. However, if every single person living in the United States decides to do three, we can complete the task in less than a minute. I think that speaks a lot about the power of collaboration and teamwork.
some of the designs actually are very interesting and intricate, and some are perhaps less interesting. But all of them actually combine to create multiple possibilities. And for this, I learned that simple ideas and simple rules can be really powerful to transform great enterprises. The third element that I would take from this box, one square and one rule, a little piece of paper. And I think you probably know what I'm talking about, origami. From the Japanese, ori, that means fold, and kami, that means paper, pronounced kami. One single square of paper that is folded can create thousands and thousands of new worlds, what I call a universe in a square. This little crease that falls and stays there forever will help us transform this paper into the most imaginative creatures. Fish, dragons, even palaces, all made from one square piece of paper. No tearing is allowed, no adding is allowed, no taking away is allowed. To me, I find this incredibly metaphorically because in our world, we typically take things, we typically give back as well. And it all comes to a full square. These three things would be perhaps the first three that I would pack in my little box in that journey to the future. And I'd like to share why. Because these three little toys or games have been important in me creating to what I consider the biggest enterprise of my life or my own game. A game that's taking me years in a journey to build and a game that actually has brought me to here today that I call the sophistication of simplicity. It's a game with one player, me, and one computer, and the mind of a child that learned with these toys and grew up with them with incredible imagination. I'd like to share with you where this journey has taken me in hopes that I will finally reach six billion players in this game. The sophistication of simplicity is a game in which I want to find all the possible forms that simple mathematical functions and simple rules can create. This was the first one that I created many years ago, and for a lack of a better name, I call it octaedrix, based on the octahedral symmetry group. And I started changing mathematical functions and playing with the shapes in the same way that I would play with Legos, not following the rules, by the way. So some other things have started to emerge out of that little play and out of changing them. And from this first series, in which I created over a few years, I ended up having close to 900 different designs with a possibility of thousands more. When I started looking at some of these, I decided to change the rules a little bit and took away a little of the symmetry. And new forms emerge out of that. So I created a second series, which I call Crownix. This series actually led me to think about other possibilities. What if I remove the curvature? And what if I start repeating some of the elements? And what if I turn them around sideways or stack them up vertically? What if I actually eliminate all those sharp edges and make everything smooth again? What if this new smoothness actually starts to create a new world of possibilities, of things that I haven't come up with before? I ended up actually numbering all this series because I ran out of names. But that didn't stop me to keep playing this game of finding all forms. What if we go back to those sharp, pointy edges again and combine them with a smooth curvature? And what happens when the two of them are overlaid and working together in harmony? Or maybe not. Maybe one takes over the other. Maybe one idea actually overpowers the other idea. And maybe new things start to happen. 
And what if I take away all the symmetry and all the rules and all the regularity to it and let this grow exactly as it wants to grow to create this new world of possible shapes? This current series called The X is perhaps one of the largest ones that I've created, um, close to 8,000 different designs. And what if actually I go really radical and start taking these equations almost to the limit and taking the mathematics to the extremes where nothing has been done before? All this hidden behind numbers, all this hidden behind simple rules. This has been the journey of my game that started here with Octo Edrix One. Started one afternoon. Cold afternoon, rainy afternoon, it was my birthday. I was in the office. I didn't want to work because it was my birthday. It was Monday. I don't want my birthday to be in a Monday, and that's why I celebrate birthdays for a week. <laughs> my students know that because I tell them this is my week birthday. So, and I didn't want to go home because I was going to hit traffic in the rain. So I sat down and I said, I have to do something. And I started imagining new things. What if? What if the possibilities of your imagination takes you to another place? And this is how it all started, with this simple shape that was created on that day. The sophistication of simplicity is my game. It's the game that I created for my life. It's the game that allows me to look for other things and start it with toys. This game is a game that I want to invite you to participate by looking at your toys by bringing them back to your desk and start actually creating a new world based on them. When I was a little child, I used to have a game with one of my best friends. We used to play chess, and I'm sure you know what that game is. But you've never played chess like my friend and I did when we were little, because we used to change a few rules. For example, we used to take the pieces, move them three times, and after three moves, we will switch around the board. So now if you were attacking, you had to be on the defensive mode. Sometimes we would shake the board and see if pieces would fall. Sometimes we go out and say, you know what? Every time you, you capture two pieces, you get to recover one that was captured before. And it totally changed the game, and it created a new world of possibilities for us, all because we looked at a game not for what it was, but for what it could be. I believe that toys are paramount in any creative world. And I don't see any creative endeavor without them, because they give us possibilities to actually create new things that we can have ever imagined. And by the way, start with simple rules, but don't be afraid to change them. Because changing the rules can lead us to new worlds. And this is my message to you. Bring your toys, get them out of your closets, and bring them back to your desks. <laughs>